Hello everyone, Luke here once again for another My Team video. It is going to be round 12 of the championship, the British Grand Prix. Before that, however, we have an invitational event to do. But before we get to that, we have made a big change in our team. We have a new driver, Nick de Vries, the Belgian F2 champion. He will be driving for us for the rest of the season. We did have Dorian Bacalacci beforehand, but Nick has a higher rating and was actually $500,000 cheaper, so a bit of a no-brainer to go for him. Hopefully, he'll be able to help boost the team. As you can see, I am 8th in the Drivers' Championship, just 3 points now off 7th place Esteban Ocon, who is best of the rest. The team 7th in the Championship, but Alfa Romeo do look to be scoring a few more points, so might have to keep looking over my shoulder for them, but for now... Let's try and get this invitational event out of the way, try and earn a bit more money and get that extra acclaim, which always helps with sponsors. So here we go, with are three laps of the Suzuka short circuit in the McLaren MP4-4, possibly the most dominant Formula 1 car of all time. Won 15 of the 16 races in the 1988 season and it was around the full Suzuka circuit where we saw Ayrton Senna claim his first driver's title in this car so hopefully we'll be able to do the great Brazilian proud and won't wreck a priceless Formula 1 car I think if it was the full Suzuka circuit I'd definitely get caught out around some of these corners but this one slightly bit easier so hopefully we can still put in a good performance we're coming towards the end of the first lap now you can just see the wheel spin getting up there and did that in less than 45 seconds, which is good because that's obviously the target. So we're not looking too bad. Hopefully we can complete it. There we go. Round with the final corner, across the finish line. And we have managed to complete that event. So fairly straightforward. Nice, easy way to earn myself a bit of cash. There we go. Done and dusted. 150,000, 1,000 extra acclaim. That will come in useful. But for now, let's head towards Silverstone then for the British Grand Prix qualifying. Here we go then. Qualifying time for Silverstone. My home race, of course. I wanted to put in a good performance. One of the most historic circuits on the calendar. Hosted the very first World Championship Grand Prix back in May. 1950 still a very high speed track many changes have happened about since then especially this section of the track that we're on now the most recent change that happened to Silverstone 2010 this was added 2011 we got the new pit lane and to be honest I did prefer the old Silverstone I could see why they did it the circuit definitely needed modernizing and bringing it up to standards but I did prefer the old circuit as you went through bridge and primary and maybe if I was on that old circuit I'd be doing a bit better than I am at the moment, currently on for 19th position on the grid, this is not good whatsoever, didn't really threaten the apex at all there, coming through Cop, so let's see how we do, with Maggots, Beckett and Chapel. just need full commitment through here, don't want to run wide through Chapel as that will compromise my run onto the hangar straight, and we had a very good run through there, we've moved up a couple of positions, still only about one and a half seconds off the time of the Mercedes, so it's not like we're a long way off the back of the order, I just think the other teams have all bunched up together in that midfield. Need to nail this final couple of corners on the lap now, just to make sure I'm not dropping a long way down the order. Running a bit wide there over the sausage curve, so this is going to be close. The 19th position is our worst qualifying for a long, long time. We're going to have to do some overtakes in the race if we want to keep this run of points going. And with qualifying complete, Let's review our top three today. Hamilton, Bottas and Charles Leclerc. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. So we can see Nick did actually manage to beat Latifi by a long, long way on his first attempt. Wasn't too far off George or me, to be fair, but you can just see how close it seems to be. Lando Norris, our rival, a long way ahead of us, so that's not ideal, but he might be compromised on strategy. We have free choice obviously so we'll have to see how the race goes can we recover in the british grand prix or will this be the first time since vietnam where i fail to score any points 
Great Britain then, one of only two countries to have held a Grand Prix in every single year of the Formula One World Championship. And the circuit extends that record further for today's Grand Prix. The 3.6 miles of the Silverstone circuit in Great Britain is hallowed ground to the Formula One faithful. We have 18 corners that wrap around this former World War II airbase and some good passing opportunities at the end of the DRS zones. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk about Mercedes. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Verstappen, Lance Stroll, and Vettel, Albon, Norris, Perez, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Kvyat, Sainz. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Pierre Gasly and Raikkonen, Ricardo, Grosjean, Kevin Magnussen, and the owner driver, Russell, De Vries, Latifi, and Esteban Ocon rounds off the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. So I think it was pretty clear from qualifying that pure pace isn't going to be enough to get us in the points this race. We are a long way down the grid. Thankfully, Ocon has a penalty, so that has jumped us up one place. We are going to go for the one-stop strategy there. Softs to mediums. Hopefully, that will be good enough. Hopefully, a few of the guys higher up have to make a second pit stop so their tyres will be slightly more worn than mine in the opening stages of the race. And it's going to be a dry race, which is always a relief around Silverstone. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if we can keep this run of points going. Underway then for the British Grand Prix. A pretty decent getaway side by side with Roman Grosjean and we're having to slam on the brakes to avoid hitting Ricardo on the start as well so we've managed to get past a couple of cars we might be able to send it down the inside of a few more here side by side with Pierre Gasly let's see if we can go all the way around the outside of him get a better exit onto the straight and it looks like we are going to be able to he's still alongside me but he's got the tighter inside line so I've managed to gain a few places off of the start line there which is good judging by qualifying we didn't really have a lot of pace in this car on these soft tyres we'll have to see if that's any better, now we've put a bit of fuel in, but we've gained a few places, up into 14, getting past both the Haas cars on the start line. And getting past Ricardo and Gasly at the loop section of the track. We don't seem to be doing too bad. Great first lap, keep it up. Keep it up with Raikkonen and Kibia, and that is going to be the aim here, and we need to look after these tyres, this front left especially. We saw this in the real British Grand Prix with how many punctures they were gets an absolute hammering around this circuit so don't be surprised if at the end of the stint I'm starting to understeer all over the place at the moment though heading towards the end of lap one and we are in 40th position see if we can boost ourselves up obviously for our sponsors we need to finish in the top 12 and then the top 10 hopefully can still sneak a point here We are a bit of a cork in the bottle here. You can see Ricardo just going to cruise past us on the run down to Stowe. So that is another place lost. Not had the best okay, entry into that corner either. Make a mistake. And I thought Ocon was going to try and have a go then. So it's crucial. I try and stay in contact with Ricardo. I've just come very deep though into club. Ocon's not going to be able to find a way around there. But that's already nearly dropped me out of that all important one We're second window. Really struggling for pace here. In practice, I don't think we looked too bad, to be honest. But we just don't seem to have any pace now that it's come to the race. It'll be a very long afternoon. I think it's going to be difficult for us to get into the top 12. Never mind, get any points. Thankfully, we've got DRS down this next raid. So hopefully that will allow us to defend from Ocon for a little while longer. But it definitely feels like a case of when, not if, that Renault driver manages to get past me. 
And if it comes down the hangar straight, so much more grip coming out of chapel and he just got so much more straight line speed as well. Nothing I can do about that. Down into 16th position and by how easily he's done that, can't see it being long before Gasly, maybe even Magnussen and a few of the others start getting past me. Might even be slowest car on the track at the moment. That was my fastest lap of the race. You can just see how far some of the others managed to get ahead of me. So down to 16th. Didn't get the best run there through Chapel, so I think once Gasly opens that DRS, there's not going to be anything I can do. He's going to the inside. There we go, he's got up a position, so I'm now down 217. K Mag, looking as though he wants to follow through, and then the next car after him is my new teammate, Nick DeVries. So, really struggling on these soft tyres. I'm hoping when I pit in a few laps' time, I can do better, but somehow I'm doubting that down into 17. Now that we've got a bit later on to, into the stint and the tyres are wearing a bit, we are able to just stay with Gasly, stay within that all-important one-second window, dragging Magnussen along with us, but we are getting, getting rid of the rest of the train behind me as I get very squirrely there, coming through Woodcut, thankfully. Able to save the back of the car, so yeah, we're not doing... Not doing as bad as we were earlier, but compared to the other races, it's still not going to plan. Staying in 17th for now, and another couple of laps before I come into the pits and put the medium tyres on. Time to head into the pits then for the one and only time in this race. Put the medium tyres on. Let's see if we can jump Gasly in the pit stops. We had actually gone up a couple of places, but that was more just because other drivers had come into the pits. So I think we're going to drop down to about 20th position after this stop, the lowest we have been in a race for a long, long time. Extremely long pit lane here at Silverstone. Very good pit stop, and we've come out, pretty much we've come out inside Gasly, but he ends up dropping behind us, so we have gained a position in the pit stop, and he's on the hard tyres as well so we'll have to see up to speed now let's get some heat into those tires whether i can get these medium tires to last until the end in a decent condition he will have drs let's not forget on this first lap out the pits but i should have a bit more pace than him so it could be very interesting in the early stages of this lap to see whether i can defend from him and already seems to have dropped a long weight behind me so we've come out of the pits we are in 19th position Hopefully we'll gain a few more places from that. Let's see if these medium tyres are any better than the softs that we just got rid of. Halfway through the race then, and we have actually gained a bit of time on those cars behind us. Magnussen has managed to get ahead of Gasly, partly because the Haas also has the medium tyres on. So we've pulled away from them slightly. We are in 16th position after the pit stop period. Reynolds ahead of us definitely look as though they're going to be pulling away. So can't see us getting any higher up the field. I think this is now just about driving my own race and making sure we don't fall any further down it. Nine and a half laps to go then, and the gap to Magnussen has grown ever so slightly on that last lap. I think mainly because Gasly keeps attacking him every now and then. So that is slowing the Haas car down, allowing us to build that bit of a gap back to the Haas in 17. So we're not catching up to the Reynolds, which I wasn't expecting, judging by how our race was going. Looks like it's just going to be a lonely drive to 16th position. Be aware, there's an incident in the next part of the track. No overtaking through the yellow flags. First retirement of the race, Lance Stroll, that bumps okay, us up. Clear. An extra position and Magnussen and Gasly have started to slowly reel us in. So we've about five laps to go. We're currently on target to catch me up by the end of the race. Maybe we have five lap 25. So we do we bump in the pace up a bit or hoping that the two of them start battling a bit more as it now looks like Gasly has got past Magnussen. So his hard tyres might be starting to come into their own. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Final lap then of the British Grand Prix. It's been a very lonely. Okay, the car behind is catching you by five tenths a lap. Five tenths. 
very lonely second stint to the race. Gasly has started to catch us up because my mediums are really starting to wear, but I think I should just about have enough to hold him off. He is about a second behind me. Haven't really got any ERS, haven't got any spare fuel whatsoever, so can't use that. Rojon's even managed to get ahead of Magnussen as well. That's how much Kevin started struggling. And in fact, Pierre has really caught me up on this lap. So this might not be over just yet. I'll see. See, I've got 0.07 laps of fuel. So that might get used down the hangar straight as I just try everything to hold on to this 15th position that I'm in at the moment. going to have to go defensive on the final lap here to just try and stop the Alfa Tauri. He's going to try and go around the outside. Has he got enough grip to pull that move off on the final lap of the race? No, he hasn't. Again, having to go defensive on the run down to Vale. He's going to try the cutback. In the end, though, able to hold him off as I come across the finish line. A worst finish since the Australian Grand Prix. 15th position, no points for the first time since Vietnam. At least we went up a couple of places from our grid spot, but not an enjoyable race whatsoever for me. Had no pace at all. Hopefully, we'll manage to do better next time around. The Mercedes team pulled out a fantastic performance today. They should be proud. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs. And that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. Yeah, that was not an enjoyable race whatsoever for me. We finished a long way down the order. Thankfully, we did manage to get to the finish, and we just managed to hold off Pierre Gasly. And I can see the, At the end. starting to approach the podium. For As you the can see, it's a 1 2 for Mercedes. A Leclerc managing. Today. Everybody to finish in third part. place and Hamilton then to getting the victory race and after this round of the world championship here's how things look in the driver's table more points for Valtteri Bottas further solidifying his lead at the top of the table some amazing talent out on the track today but Anthony who would you pick as your driver of the day it's got to be Lewis Hamilton I mean he pulled off some impressive feats out on the track today even by his standards it's time to check out the constructors' standings. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. So there you can see in the constructors staying, unsurprisingly, in seventh position. We are looking to be on our own a bit now there. 26 points ahead of Alfa Romeo, 17 behind McLaren. In the drivers, I have dropped down to ninth position, but it is getting very tight. All the way from Esteban Ocon in 7th, Daniel Ricciardo in 12th. It's only 8 points separating them. As you can see, go down the order. I finished in 15th, just had no pace whatsoever. In fact, I think everyone, apart from the two Williams, managed to set a faster lap than me in that race. Nick finished quite a long way off the back. He must have dropped back in that final stint, but not too bad for his, for his first race. We'll see how he improves as the season goes on, but I think today's definitely shown. I'm going to need to spend a bit of money and spend some resource points improving the car otherwise we might struggle to get points for the rest of the season great work out there today let's have your thoughts did you struggle to get through all that traffic today keep bumping the chassis department up as that is the weakness isn't it? was today a good day for you I'm going to be honest, I'm not happy at all. I thought we'd, I thought we'd do better. And I don't want to... There's nothing really that could have gone better car-wise. It was just an all-round problem. Appreciate your time. Wasn't fast enough in the straights. Wasn't really fast enough in the corners. So I think we do need to make some car improvements. We have got a few major upgrades on the way. A couple of them will be done before Hungary, I believe. As you can see, Norris has caught up in the rivalry. It's 4-2 from that race, but we've still got a few races to go before the end of that. And we will have only managed to meet one of our team objectives as well from a financial point of view, just for completing 75 laps. So not as much of a sponsor bonus as I could have done with us. I think a few departments will need to be upgraded so we can get multiple 
upgrades done at once. That is the end though for Silverstone, not the home Grand Prix that I was expecting. Definitely no points for the first time since Vietnam. We'll have to see if we can do better next time around. Round 13 of the championship will be around the Hungara ring. And as I said, we do have a few upgrades ready before that. So let's see how we do. It looks like Honda have sent us a durability upgrade as well. Can we get back into the top 10 at Hungary? Or was Silverstone a sign of a struggle in the second half of the season? We'll have to find out next time. Cheers everyone for watching and goodbye.